Hi, my name is Evgeny, and I'm a product expert at NetHunt CRM. NetHunt is a CRM system built right in Gmail to automate your sales and marketing tasks, help you organize emails, structure customer data, and synchronize activities across all G Suite apps. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the essential and useful features that you will be using daily while working with our CRM, and I'll explain how to use them most effectively. Let's move on to our system preview. Right after your account is created, you enter the web version of NetHunt CRM. This is what NetHunt will look like when you see it for the first time. So, let's go over it and see where is what. Although the web version does not have inbox in it, the rest of the capabilities are not different from the extension that you'll be adding to your Gmail. You can operate folders in the folder section, manage your team and permissions, and send out email campaigns. A small step-by-step -step guide will help me to add an extension to my browser, connect G Suite, import my data, and invite colleagues. Let's add an extension to my Chrome. I will also leave the links to our extension for Chrome, Firefox and Safari in the description under this video. In the Chrome Web Store, we only need to click on Install button twice, and that's it. Afterward, we can open it in Gmail and activate the extension. Now, your Gmail is upgraded with a CRM functionality designed to make your sales and marketing activities more automated and efficient. Let's start exploring NetHunt capabilities with creating a new contact, deal, or company from the emails in your inbox. I've received a new email from a lead, and I'd like to create a new contact. I click on the NetHunt icon, which is now grey out to show that this email is not connected to anything in the system yet, and NetHunt will automatically suggest to create a new record. I'll make a new contact out of this email. The same way you can create a lead, a company, and a deal from the email. My new contact is now saved and available in a contacts folder. Now, let's open up the email and check if our new contact was not only created, but linked to this email as well. And we can see the confirmation of it. The right sidebar with the record preview. I can make changes here and check how it goes on a timeline. All the future emails from or to this recipient will be automatically saved in the record. After my reply to the new customer, I see two more options on the top. Open and click Tracking Features. By default, my outbound email will be tracked by the system, which means I will see when the recipient opens my letter. And if I insert any links to an email, a click tracking feature would provide me with information about how many times a link was used. I can also put a reminder for myself to follow up on this email in the future. I click on this flag icon and a drop-down menu allows me to select a date and a follow-up priority type. All my follow-ups are located under the folder section from the left. Let's continue discovering NetHunt basics with our new contact. From the record preview, I can go into the system using Open Record button in the right upper corner. Now, what I see is called a record in NetHunt. A record is divided into three main parts – Field Section, Interaction Dashboard and the Timeline. Field Section helps me keep my information structured inside the CRM system. There are a lot of different field types in NetHunt. Let's create one as an example. I need to go to the folder settings. Here I can change, group up, delete or add fields. I need to make a status field and it would be a drop-down type. With its help, I can assign a special label to a contact and be aware of his status during my further negotiations with him. There are many field types in NetHunt as I said, so make sure to check them all before you will set up the system. 
Interaction dashboard allows me to save valuable insights of my conversation with the customers. For instance, I'll certainly need to call this new lead and discuss the terms of the new deal, so I'll leave a comment. After a call, I'll make a short call log in a necessary column. I can also create an event with this guy and invite him directly. And, of course, we won't forget about the future invoice for the upcoming deal. I can leave it right here, attach to my record and find it later on a timeline. If I have lots of information there, I can filter everything up to find the necessary information real quick. By the way, let's add a new deal related to this contact. I scroll down to the bottom of the field section and find a field named Deal. This field is a direct touchpoint to my deals folder and if I click on the plus sign here, the system will make a deal in the deals folder related to this particular contact. Let's open up the deals folder to explore its structure and capabilities in more detail. I click on a deals folder to open it and the first thing that I see is a full list of all my deals. I'll be able to add new views to this folder, but this one always stays default. Here's what we can do from within this folder. I can add new deal by clicking on the plus new record button here or plus new here. I can also group up the deals in a way to view only the ones that I need. For example, I would like to group all my deals by close date and see the month when the deal should be closed. I click on list view and select one of the fields that I have in all my records in this folder. Close date. It turns my colorless list view into a bright and readable card layout. And now I can even check the week or even exact day when the deal should be closed. Let's add some useful information about those deals. With a card layout button, we can choose fields we would like to be shown on the layout. For me, it is crucial to see what was the deal amount, on what stage my deals are at this moment, and what products have been requested. I can also apply filters to see a more specific piece of data. For instance, I would like to see the deals with a deal amount more than $1,000 only. For this, I click on a filter button and choose a field deal amount. But then, I'm creating a new filter rule which would sound like deal amount greater than $1,000. Hit apply and I can see my updated view with deals for more than $1,000. Moreover, I can check the total income I get from all these deals by clicking on the summarize button by field deal amount and show the sum. Now I can see the inspiring numbers over the top. Let's say I would like to keep the view to monitor the deals that should be closed next week or next month. For this I click on the Save View button. Give it a name. Decide if I want to share it with my team and that's it. I can always access it easily from the left sidebar. By the way, you can have as many views as needed. There are no limitations. So now, as I'm getting more confident exploring NetHunt, I would like to try adding my own data to it. In NetHunt, I can import my files from a CSV file or directly from a few CRM systems like Strict. First, I hover my mouse over the main NetHunt icon available on the top right corner and click on it. A dialog box will appear proposing me to perform some general actions like create folder, check my billing plan, check my team informations, import data, integrate with Zapier, and look into settings. I need the import data button. At this step, I need to select one of the import options that NetHunt provides and continue following the steps on the screen. 
I'll pick the CSV file option. Now, before importing my file, I have structured it so my information would be migrated properly. I will also leave a link in the description on a tutorial how to prepare your CSV file and your information ready to be imported in NetHun. As soon as the file upload is complete, I get to the mapping screen that allows me to choose where exactly I'd like to import this set of data. Existing folder like contacts or companies, or I need to create a new one. If your source file has the same set of fields as an existing folder in your workspace you are importing records to, like deals or contacts, then you'll have everything mapped smoothly. If you have a different set of fields, make sure the source and target ones are mapped correctly. Maybe it's better to create a new folder to move them into. Once I'm done, I hit the button Start Import. Now the new data that I've just imported is ready to be processed. With NetHunt, I can also send bulk email campaigns right from my Gmail. From the main menu, I can see the section where I can make it happen. The first thing that we have to do is to enter the name of the campaign, select the folder and the view with the particular records. On the next step, I see the path from where my records were taken just to make sure there is no mistake. If I have made any mistakes or selected a couple of duplicated records, the system will automatically highlight them and suggest to exclude. Now I can compose an email template, a simple text email or an HTML code. I'm gonna draft a simple text email and add some personalization to it. In the bottom of the page, I can find text formatting options. Open and click track and options, and buttons to add links, files and pictures. A click track and option could be enabled or disabled only when I put at least one link in my template. Also, there is a special button to add an unsubscribe link to your emails so that the customers will have an option to unsubscribe from emails with one click if they want to. Last step shows what our email will look like either on a computer or mobile. From the right side, I may also find additional options to set up a specific time to send my campaign and choose one of the delivery options suggested by NetHunt. Once the campaign is sent, I'm able to view some basic stats. Open, click, bounce, reply, and unsubscribe rate. Considering the statistics, I can also make another email campaign right after it. I want to indicate the people who actually did not open my previous message and send them another email. I click on the filter button, choose emails which were not open, Select them all and make a new campaign. I guess we've covered almost everything at this point, so it's time to move on to the settings part. Let's start from the general Gmail settings. I can find them in the right top corner in my inbox, under my Google account icon. Let's take a closer tour of what I can do there. I can choose the location of the workspace and folders, either before or after the inbox. I can check the email open tracking and click tracking features and set up whether I would like to track my outbound emails or not. Notifications panel here to see when I was added to new records or when I add other users to new records. Developer tools option is intended to create an API key to establish connections with other applications. Email Campaigns SMTP will allow me to use custom SMTP server to reach more customers whenever I will send a new campaign and avoid the G Suite limitations. Don't forget to save any changes before you will leave this page for the new settings to be applied.
Now let's talk about what I can do in NetHunt Settings and Permissions tab. I can access it from my dashboard clicking on the Settings in the bottom of my Workspace tab from the left. NetHunt Settings consists of a couple tabs. Preferences tab is where I can customize personal preferences of my workspace. Folder and Field Management tab is the place where I can set up my folder structure and organize fields. I can find some helpful tips to the right, and if I click on the Read More, I will be redirected to the Help Center, where I can find dozens of articles with various information. If I click on any folder, I will be able to change its name, color and icon. On the second tab, Fields, I can set up unique fields for my folder and unite them under field groups. In the Save Views tab, I can reorder views, rename them, change the visibility either to everyone or myself only, and export them. Roles section is planned for supervising roles designated for different people or groups of people. Clicking on three vertical dots in front of role name, I can rename, copy, delete this role, or manage permissions. By managing permissions, I can allow people to access particular folders and records, change, create, export views and items inside each folder. The role permissions will be valid for all the user role members. In the users, I can see all workspace members, manage their roles and invite more people. Google Contacts Sync tab will grant me with an opportunity to sync my Google Contacts and the Contacts folder in the NetHunt. My existing information wouldn't be touched or overwritten and I can have my personal data migrated easily. Trashbin displays folders, records and fields recently removed from my workspace. Account Management tab allows me to delete all my user data which cannot be restored. And in the Workspace Management tab, I can rename the workspace or delete it. Last but not least type of settings is the folder settings. If I hover my mouse to the navigation bar from the left, I can find three vertical dots. With the help of this small drop-down menu, I can create an email campaign, copy the entire folder but only its structure and not the records inside. Export the folder outside the system. Hide from navigation bar completely. No worries, you can restore it back in the folder and field management. Show record count. Hide snippets on threads. Snippets are the tiny little vivid fragments over my emails that help me recognize valuable information from the gray mass. And right here, I can decide whether I'd like my context information to be highlighted or not. Customize folder, rename, change its color and icon. Customize fields and show fields with important data in snippets. Manage permissions for that folder. And delete it. Well, that's all for now. Huge thanks to everyone who watched this video and went through the basics of our system with me. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. And if you have any questions or inquiries, you can reach out to us at support.nethunt.com and on our website. Bye!